So I know I don't go over the JP patch notes all that often, but because this is the two year anniversary update and everything like that for them, uh, they have quite a bit of really good information on this one. So I would assume that we are gonna get something very similar to that on the global version. Um, I don't think that they're gonna brand it as the two year anniversary. Obviously they'll probably rebrand it as something else, but uh, it seems really promising. Like I think that uh, they're adding a really good amount of stuff in this. So uh, we're just gonna kind of blow through it a little bit. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I just thought it was kind of cool like uh, how much stuff they're kind of like doing uh, for the community and everything like that. So we're getting chapter 18, which is really cool. New stories, always really nice. Uh, they did actually translate and release the sort of um, skills and passives of uh, uh, new purgatory bond. Uh, okay, swap tabs accidentally, nice. Um, the biggest thing that bothers me about this is the fact that at level one, uh, his ultimate is uh, like, it does what it does. And then at the max level, it inflicts rupture damage as well. So I don't know if that's going to be something that you only get when he's six, six, but if so, I really don't like that. I really wish they would stop making it to where, uh, six, six ultimates and stuff like that deal or like just have an extra added effect to them. Like, yeah, I like on one hand, I can, I guess I can understand being rewarded for, you know, spending that much money on the game, I guess. But at the same time, it kind of gives everybody else a disadvantage. And uh, like, it's just, I don't know. I, a lot of players aren't going to be able to take advantage of this. I feel like if it's only on level six, um, maybe if it's level two, you start to get in, uh, like rupture. Maybe I could see that being okay ish. But even then, I just, I don't think that the ultimate should have additional effects on it. Um, as it levels up. I mean, like I can see the percentage going up. That's been like that forever. Like, okay, whatever, you know, that sounds about right. But, uh, I don't know. Something about that rubs me the wrong way. He seems really interesting, though. I've seen a lot of gameplay of him at this point from just like the actual like fest or the uh, the live streams and everything and people breaking it down and stuff. And he seems to be like a super tank like him with Arthur and <laughs> the one Escanor just seems like an absolutely unstoppable force. So uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it turns out in the actual meta and stuff like that. I assume he's going to be very annoying to go against, which is very unfortunate. But I mean, for the people who like him and want to play with him, uh, I'm sure he's going to be pretty good. So the banner itself seems to be pretty self-explanatory, kind of like the rest of the banners. Um, it is a 0.25 rate, but we have four festival units on it. I don't really know why they put Winged King on here. I'm assuming just because Merlin was the last actual festival that we got, so it may be a little too early for them to put her on the banner. But uh, it is really nice that Escanor's on here. It is nice that Lost Vane is on here. Lost Vane was obviously the first festival unit that they released, so... Um, People might not be necessarily looking for Lost Vane copies, but Lost Vane is still very, very good in my opinion. The one Escanor is really, really good, and obviously people are going to be trying to summon for Purgatory Bond. Um, I think people are going to be a little upset pulling New Wings King, but at least it's a 1% overall to get a festival. Uh, the rest of the banner seems pretty solid, honestly. So they have Sariel, Tarmiel, um, Chandler on the banner. So those three alone are really good. We have Ludociel. We have Mark II Valenti, which is really good. Uh, we have Red, Red Derriere, which I'm not too worried about because I already have her maxed out, but I know a lot of people really like Red Derriere. If you don't have her for like Howlix or Crimson Demon, um, you know, obviously he's really good. I honestly, a lot of people were really complaining about Lilia, Escanor, and Blue Demon Meliodas. I'm not too worried about them adding regular Lilia, like the Blue Lilia, because honestly she's like, yeah, she is on a lot of the OC banners and stuff like that, but I haven't had a whole lot of luck pulling on her specifically. I really could give, you know, <laughs> a crap less about Escanor and Blue Demon Meliodas, but that's just because I've been playing the game for a long time and I already have those two maxed out. Uh, I definitely see where people are coming from, like complaining about why they're on the banner um but then again it's really just it was a it was a majority vote kind of thing so i, I guess a lot of new players were probably going in and uh voting on the banner trying to make sure that they could get you know units that they needed or they wanted so i, I guess it's just all dependent on the player base hopefully on global uh people you know they vote for what they want obviously if if it is some of these older characters and everything like that i mean there's not really anything you can do about it if if a majority of the player base wants them it looks like they're probably going to get added so uh um, 
Knights of Danafor Liz is on here, which I think is kind of odd. I guess a lot of people are probably using it for uh, Belmoss raids and uh, maybe even Grey Demons. So I can guess I can kind of see that one. Like, that's not too terrible. Uh, we have Nobles Easton. I'm not exactly sure which Easton this is off the top of my head because I don't know, uh, like, all of her prefixes or whatever. But uh, uh, we have, I think this is the Blue Mono, which is pretty cool because, I mean, she's kind of newer. And then we have uh, the green small Deanne who can tank, which is cool. And then we actually have another Easton too. I think Ruler of the Stormy Seas is the blue Easton, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, which is pretty good because I think a lot of people end up getting a pretty decent like support role like use out of her. Um, so the other one I would assume is probably green Easton because the red Easton is pretty lackluster. So <sighs> moving down. Uh, we have the actual banner itself. Obviously, it's a 300, 600, 900. Uh, guaranteed SSR on 300 and 600. And then you have a choice of Purgatory Bond or the one Escanor on this one, which is pretty good. Uh, I think that works out really well. Obviously, a lot of people are still using the one Escanor. And I guess it really just depends on what level you're going to get Rupture at on Purgatory Bond's ultimate. And uh, I think that's going to be a big defining factor on like whether or not uh, you want to go for him over Escanor. If you already have Escanor um, and you're really looking to invest in Bond, that's probably uh, the way that you'll end up going. I guess it just depends on how hard you went on the initial the one Escanor banner if you were even around for it. So I don't know. Escanor is obviously really really good, so I can see a lot of people being happy that you know. I guess if you pull Vaughn early, you can go for an extra copy of Escanor. So that'll probably be what I end up doing. But I do want to see what level he uh, actually gains rupture. If it's at if it's only at six six and one through five is you know no rupture, like <laughs> I'll be really disappointed in it and probably just not even worry about going for six six on him at that point. Um, Bond will not be added to the general pool after the banner leaves. If you have duplicate coins of festival units, you will get a festival coin. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty standard. Um, this right here is really, really interesting. So it's called the Fever Event. And you can see they highlight this box up in the top right. And they go over it a little bit. It says uh, Fever Mileage uh, Banners. So if you summon on the Purgatory Festival Banner or the Seasonal Star Banner, which is this one over here, it has literally all the seasonal units on it, uh, you will basically gain mileage for it. And it says every single pull is one Fever Mileage. A multi equals 11 Fever Mileage. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, somewhere down further in the list, they show off that they're doing a um, login event during the, the festival where they're basically going to be giving out a ton of multis for this banner, which is really good. So you'll be able to rack up the mileage on it a little bit easier. And if you're summoning on the bond banner, you know, you're going to have that much more mileage. So basically, <laughs> it's it's just a whole bunch of like free rewards and stuff. But the interesting thing is this, uh, the, like the fever rewards. So you can see at level level 30, or once you hit 30 mileage, you get an SSR pendant, five diamonds back on the six. 60, and then at 90, it says you get a free multi on the seasonal banner and the SSR rates are increased by 5%. So that is super, super interesting. Obviously, these seasonal units don't come around all that often. Um, I think um, it, it looks like they really didn't vote for a whole lot of seasonal units or anything like that at all. Uh, I don't think any of them besides Danafor Liz are really seasonal in here. And I'm not even sure that on JP they even made Danafor Liz a seasonal character or not. I would assume they did because she kind of has that sort of like uh, Christmas outfit. But this whole banner looks pretty good. It obviously has Green Demon Melee, which a lot of people like. It has Festival... Or, uh, Halloween Gother, which people love. He's still really, really good. It has Hawk and Ozzo, which are really cool. Um, Valentine's Derriere and stuff like that. So they're basically going to be giving out a ton of free multis and stuff like that. And uh, if you're summoning on the Purgatory Bond Festival or you're even summoning on just this banner in general, uh, you'll rack up and be able to get a better chance at pulling SSRs on the banner, which I think is super nice. Like, that's honestly very, very cool. And, uh, so yeah, you can see they have like this whole like thing. I think this looks really sick. I like I like the way that the text kind of looks with Hawk and everything like that. I think they uh, I think they made it look really cool. I guess this is the maybe hmm. I think once you hit the 90, 190, 290, and 390 uh, marks, well, and 490 as well, it stops basically right before 500 mileage. But uh, I think once you hit that, you'll unlock this banner, which I think will be the increased rates banner. Kind of like how if you buy those like guaranteed SSR tickets, they have their own separate banner um, that you actually summon on compared to the regular banner and everything like that. It looks like almost something like that, 
where you just summon on this one it has the increased rates and everything like that and then uh, you'll be able to <laughs> i guess just do a regular multi and hope that you pull something cool so i'm actually looking really forward to that the only characters that i'm missing personally from the seasonal banner uh, i think they actually go over the uh they went over the, yeah, here's the actual uh, list of all of the seasonal units and everything like that. The only two that I'm missing personally is Captain Meliodas from Halloween and then the Halloween Guardian Elaine. So I would really like to grab those if possible, but obviously with there being a pretty decent chunk of uh, seasonal units and stuff like that on the banner, I'm not going to hold my breath. I think it would be cool if I could get those units while they're available, but uh, obviously it's you know, kind of a toss up whether you get anything or not. So <laughs> it does seem really cool. It seems very gener uh, generous of them. Um, so yeah, it goes over the new outfits for Bond, which is really cool. Obviously there's going to be some bundles and stuff like that on like what the actual, like how to buy the tickets and stuff. Uh, they are doing a couple of different like bundles for just like a, a, a decent amount of tickets and diamonds together. Uh, this one specifically I thought was really interesting because it's a guaranteed SSR ticket for the Purgatory Festival banner. Um, I would assume it's just a decent, like it's just SSRs on the banner uh, and you use the ticket one time so you have a decent chance of getting a festival unit, I would imagine. Um, you get 10 regular tickets to summon on the banner and then 10 tickets for the seasonal banner as well. So that's really interesting. Obviously it's $49-ish for us, so uh, almost $50. I think that'll probably end up going under like the $42, well, I don't know, maybe even more than that. I can't remember exactly how the conversion there works, but seems a little pricey but at the same time that's that's two free like two i say free there, that's two multis on uh, the two different banners or one multi on each banner and then uh, you get a guaranteed ssr ticket so that's pretty neat um i don't know it really just depends on you and whether you're, you're comfortable buying that sort of thing um, they are doing a bunch of different bundles obviously this anniversary daily pack seems kind of interesting because you get guaranteed ssr tickets uh whether they're part one or part two and you get a, a multi's worth of the uh the ssr race draw tickets and a multi's worth of the human tickets which <laughs> those that human ticket banner needs to be changed because that thing is trash um i think these are the okay so this is like the diamond bonus event you spend x amount of diamonds uh no i don't think that is that actually i think this is just uh the smaller like regular sort of bundles where you get x amount of diamonds and x amount of tickets per per pack so that's pretty standard stuff uh they are adding a lot of the old festival units to the coin shop with obviously you have to trade like festival coins for them and everything like that so uh it looks like you'll be able to get uh lost vein uh goddess liz winged king the the one escanor daughter of belly Halloween and merlin so the festival merlin uh, but yeah, it's three coins for the exchange on that. <laughs> I guess it is kind of weird that they chose to put Small Winged King on the banner instead of Goddess Liz. I think people probably would have been more happy with that. But uh, I don't know. I guess they're still trying to sell the whole King thing. Oh well. Uh, they're adding another floor to Tower of Trials, which is cool. Apparently, they're adding rarity to the, the titles that you unlock, which I think is kind of interesting. I'm not really sure why, but I guess it's cool, I guess. Um, there's a new battle event, purgatory events. So they're doing like the, uh, special missions where you can unlock a full free multi, which is really cool. It doesn't look like any of them are super crazy, just like normal. Um, and then, yeah, they're doing a special rewards dungeon, a bunch of other just random stuff. They're doing a bunch of free events. Uh, they're doing a bunch of Hawk Pass stuff, new bingo event, uh, just various, various events and stuff like that. This one is actually super interesting. So this is a new demon. <sighs> Sorry, I'm talking a lot and running out of breath because I'm <laughs> a lot to go over. But there's a new demon. He looks really cool. He almost reminds me of like an alligator, like you can see him right here. Um, and basically the concept is, is I guess you put together two different teams to go into the battle. And I'm not, I seen a little bit of the gameplay of it when they were doing it last night on the live stream. But um, you put like two different teams together and you basically go in and any time you can hit the button and swap to the other team. Um, and I guess you're just trying to take the boss down like that. But when I was watching it, like the guy was using both teams and every single hit that he did, no matter what character he used, they always did one damage depending on how many hits the actual move does. 
and then uh, he literally didn't sh like do any damage to him at all, and the boss literally like wrecked him. So there's got to be some sort of like gimmick to it. He has this like little like aura thing around him and everything. So I don't know. He was he was definitely like swapping between his teams and stuff like that. And one of his teams had uh, like Keo and uh, the new festival bond and everything like that on it, and he was just <laughs> doing absolutely nothing to him. So I don't know what the gimmick is for that yet, but it actually looks like a really interesting and like fun sort of game mode. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. So. Uh, new play mode A and B team. Uh, I guess that's I don't know. That might be like a weird translation or whatever. I don't <laughs> I don't know if that'll be the actual name for it. But uh, I think it's cool that you use two different teams. I think that's really interesting. Uh, they are giving away a couple free cosmetics and stuff like that. There's a uh, party hat for Bon, Escanor, and Merlin. I'm assuming that this is the festival Merlin. It kind of looks like it with the hairstyle and everything like that. And they did show off uh, when they were going over Bon's cosmetics in the live stream that he had this. So you can use this uh, headpiece or cosmetic on the new festival uh, festival bond, so you don't have to worry about grabbing an additional headpiece or anything like that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the new hot pass stuff. They're actually adding a Excalibur Arthur outfit or costume, like a full costume uh, for Arthur, which is kind of cool. So if you already have like a bunch of like hot pass points saved up and everything like that, you can go ahead and get a new UR set for Arthur whenever he comes out on global. Um, I would just I would just recommend kind of saving your hot pass points and stuff like that. And then uh, they have the sort of regular rewards. They are changing some of the additional stuff besides the costumes that you can change for or uh, exchange for, where you can get uh, super awakening coins and uh, looks like some cosmetic upgrades and SSR pendants, which is really neat. And then the rest of the stuff seems kind of normal. So uh, altogether, <laughs> it looks really good. So this is the login event that I was talking about earlier. You get a free copy of Hawk at the beginning. So uh, for a lot of people who have already been playing the game, you probably already have him 6-6 six -sixth if you got him whenever they initially released him. But you'll get a free coin for him if you don't already have him. If not, you'll actually get the character. And then it's literally <laughs> 11 days in a row of free multis on that seasonal banner, which is really nice. Like, that seems super generous. I'm really glad that they're giving out that many because honestly, like, just those multis alone is going to get you to a pretty decent spot in the uh, the mileage and everything like that. So uh, I think this looks really good. It's obviously going to give a lot of people a good chance to get those seasonal units that don't come around all that often. Um, there's obviously a couple of extra rewards and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> other than that, they're doing a, a King's Exchange. They're doing sort of like the normal kind of things. I don't know exactly what these are. They did show off that they were going to add some new recipes and stuff. Uh, it doesn't look like those have really been uh, translated all that well. Maybe they have. Reduce ultimate damage by 50%, excluding deathmatch and PvP. Um, increases Fort, or Fort Solgris gold box rate by 15%. Deathmatch costume enhanced materials 100% increase. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, basically just kind of like some PvE sort of um, like food for your content and everything like that. And then they went over this right here, which is a system change, real-time deathmatch matching. And I don't exactly know what they're showing off here because they don't really like go in depth into it at all. But uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But it looks kind of interesting. They add a new box that just says "Open." Um, I would imagine maybe that just means like you can start the death match by yourself and then like have it open to where somebody else can join in the middle of it. Maybe I don't exactly know. I don't think that that's really how they're gonna do it. But they don't really really have a whole lot of extra info on it. So uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. The big biggest thing uh, right here at the bottom though is that the new Excalibur King Arthur is going to be added to the race draw part one tickets. So if you want to start saving those up to try to pull extra copies of Arthur, feel free to start doing that now. Um, and then the Arthur banner itself is getting extended on JP and Korea till June 10th. So uh, I think that's going to give a lot of people time to sort of get him if they don't already have him. So that way he'll pair really well with Bond. So yeah, very interesting. I think that these patch notes are pretty solid. And, and I hope that a lot of this stuff stays the same for when it comes over to the global version of the game. Obviously, it's a, a lot of free rewards, a lot of free stuff. <laughs> and uh, the banners and the fever thing seems really, really fun and interesting. The content seems really fun and interesting. I think this is going to be a really cool celebration. So uh, that's basically it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching still ended up being about 20 minutes long which I, I tried to go <laughs> quickly through some of it but uh, yeah that is basically it for me feel free to subscribe for more content in the future and I'll see you guys in the next video